Moving forward. Right now, a future president could be running as a local candidate on your ballot. This person is vying to represent you, your family, and your community. Do you know what they are and what they stand for? Vote411.org is your tool for accurate and unbiased, up-to-the-minute election information on the candidates running in local races. Just enter your address to get started. Your vote is your power, the power to decide who represents you in 2022 and beyond. Get online, get the facts, and make your voice heard on Election Day. Moving forward. Fantastic. So, um, not a lot of time in his first interview, so I want to try to get in as much as you possible before I have to go call my next candidate. So, uh, let's get right into it, bro. All right, very well. So, for everybody at home listening, who are you and what office are you running for? Uh, aloha, Kako. My name is Maurice Goulding, and I'm running for Hawaii County Council District 2 here in Hilo on the Big Island. Right. And uh, my campaign website is votingformaurice.com. Right on. So before we get into your campaign and about yourself, we're doing a little education for the voters and listeners at home so they can better understand how to engage with their candidates and uh, those in office. Could you please help explain what a council member's duties would be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a council member's duty duties is essentially to uh, draft legislation to create bills that are then passed um, by the uh, the mayor's office. And of course, um, just like in the federal government, um, the council has the capabilities of overriding a veto um, should that happen. Um, the council members also uh, approve the proposed budget from the mayor's office and also approve the mayor's appointments to uh, the various um, um, departments. Right on. Cool. Nice. Sweet to the point. Like it. We, we, we get some long-winded ones. We get some short ones. But that one is nice and succinct. Dig it. Okay. So let's talk about you. Let's give a little history of Maurice before we talk about what you want to do with the office. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but before we get <clears throat> into this more, I, I want to say thank you for um, providing this opportunity for, for everyone. Absolutely. Um, you know, it is so important that we participate in this democratic process. You know, I've talked to a lot of people who just, you know, they don't believe in it. They don't think it works for them, mm -hmm. that their voice isn't heard. And, you know, if, if you don't participate, your voice will absolutely never be heard. Very good and, point. You know, at, at this level of office, so people understand, you know, um, it only takes $25 to enter the race. So if, if you don't like your council member, you know, spend the $25 and, and run, you know, mm. <laughs> put yourself out there. Um, you know, I, I just really want to encourage people to take take part. And also um, to those who say that, uh, you know, this is an occupied state and it was illegally overtaken. I 100 percent agree. Um, but, you know, uh, take uh, Prince Kuhio Kalaniana Ole, for example, you know, after he came back from his self-exile, um, 
he became a congressman for 10 terms. Mm -hmm. So he participated. And uh, I think that's that's a great example, you know. Um, and yeah, just can't can't um, promote people to to get involved enough. So, okay. <laughs> that being said, um, I um, I'm a hardworking problem solver who believes in service above self, and uh, that might sound familiar to those of you who are familiar with Rotary um, Rotary Club. I, I've been involved with them for five years up until last year. Um, and I was the uh, president of the South Hilo Rotary Club for a year and was able to get that club's commitment to a uh, 10 year commitment to sustainability. Um, I have a degree in industrial technology management from Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, I've been a superintendent of a crew for over 80 men and women. Well, a uh, member of Local 52 in Chicago, which is a member of the International Bricklayers Union. I've been a vice president of a logistics company that transloaded over 100 trucks and 12 rail cars a day. Um, I've been a director of operations for a demographics group. Uh, I've been a plant manager for a bottling plant here on the Big Island. Um, currently, I work as a consultant and industrial technician in the food and beverage industry, and I also fix machines and do building maintenance. I come from a huge extended family. I'm the son of a brilliant attorney who served under clerkship um, from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Sadly, she passed, year, passed away about 20 years ago. Um, I'm also a brother, a father, and a fiance. Uh, I was born outside San Francisco, but I learned to swim while living with my foster family in Kauai. Um, and though I grew up in Chicago, Hawaii has always called me home. I'm absolutely passionate about the environment and doing what we can to save what we can of our beautiful planet uh, and our island. And I'm ready to put my vast skill set to use here in Hawaii as a member of the county council. Right on. So uh, with that skill set of yours, what would you say are the three biggest things you'd like to tackle with the council seat? Well, <laughs> give you go. Unfortunately, I can't be limited to three. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, but we only got so much time, you, and I'd like to be I'll able to talk right to you beyond that. that. Uh, yeah. One of the most important things I think we we need to do, and from a council position, um, some people say that there's not a lot you can do, but we can definitely get the ball rolling, mm -hmm. and we can definitely stand for pay equity um, for our women. Uh, I know. I think about uh, four years ago, I read that, you know, we we're like in the top 12 states of like being best as like, you know, closing that that pay equity gap. But the problem is, is that it still exists and it's still, I think, over 15 cents. So, you know, <laughs> women are getting paid 15 percent less and they're having to do more. You know, women are, are the, um, you know, the, the caretakers for the family, mm -hmm. you know. And we, we need to stand with them and make sure that um, they have, you know, at least equal pay. So I think there's definitely some legislation we can pass um, to help promote that, as well as creating public awareness. Um, past that, um, I think government transparency and accountability is huge. Uh, I think... Um, when I talk to most of the constituents here, um, well, who I hope to be my constituents, um, they're very upset about government because they don't feel that it's working for them. And most of the time, it's just that they don't know that the government is actually working on solving the problems. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, a slow, it's a slow process. It's like um, trying to slow a train, you know? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so there are people in government right now who are doing wonderful things for the people, but we don't know about it. And then on the other hand, they're doing th some things at times that we, we don't agree with. And we don't know when we're supposed to be able to, um, you know, get out there and have our voices heard. Um, there isn't, um, you know, we look to our, um, our elected officials and you go to the websites and every year they say, or every election, they say that they're going to communicate with the public and just sign up and get emails and, and um, <laughs> you know, learn what's going on in government. You know, if I'm elected, you will hear from me every week. If you sign up for uh, my, my um, email list, you will get an email from me every week as a progress report as far as what I've done and what is going on in government. Also, it'll be on my web page and it'll also be on Facebook. And then I'll have, um, you know, a link for my Instagram. So um, that will all be there. Also, as far as accessibility, I'll work nighttime hours. You will, <laughs> I think you'd be hard pressed to find a council member who, who um, works as hard as I do. Um, I have throughout my life have been um, 
somewhat of a workaholic. I throw 100% of myself into my job. And after my last job where I worked um, for somebody, I decided that I, I just, I couldn't work for anybody else. I needed to work for myself. And I have to be honest with you, and this may sound corny, the, the only people that I'm willing to work for are the people. Um, I want the people to be my, my employer and I am ready to be held accountable. Um, after that, a, an extraordinarily huge issue that people have been talking about for decades, but now because of the pandemic, hopefully people are ready to really move on is food security. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give a shout out to, a shout out to uh, Chad Buck and everyone with the Hawaiian Food Alliance. I don't know if you know this or the listeners know this, but if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have gotten the produce that we needed during the pandemic, especially in the early on in the pandemic. So Hawaii almost went without food because of the pandemic. And there's a lot more going on in the world right now that we need to know about that is going to cause food shortages to hit our shores. Right now, California, as we know, um, dealing with you know a mega drought, fires, et cetera, so is Texas um, and New Mexico. But Hawaii is um, the breadbasket of the United States. So when they're not producing food, food prices are going to go up and food is going to become more scarce. So we, we need to act now. And I know that there are some people um, who think that that's something that, um, you know, other districts need to worry about who, you know, are, um, you know, uh, more centered around agriculture. But I believe that this is something that my district absolutely 100 percent needs to think about even more so. Because when ships don't come in and they don't bring our food, we can't go to the store and get food anymore. People who live in the agricultural districts generally go in their backyard and they eat fine. So, you know, this is something we need to work on immediately. This is, you know, we are approaching an emergency. And when an emergency happens, it'll be too late. So we, we really need to get ahead of this now. Um, another main issue that I think is always on everyone's minds is uh, houselessness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I say houselessness because I think it's a more appropriate term. Um, my biological mother passed away in 2013 houseless in front of a shelter in California. So um, this is a very uh, important topic and one that I approach with a great deal of compassion um, you know, certainly there are issues with those who are mentally ill and certainly there are issues, um, with those who have drug problems, but, you know, when you look across the nation and you look at the, the rates of houselessness and you look at home prices in those areas and there's a direct correlation. Mm -hmm. So as our house prices go up, we will see more houselessness. Now, when I, um, help volunteer at, at um, the Red Cross Center um, shelter down in uh, Bohol in 2018 during the um, uh, the eruption. There were quite a few families there who, you know, were displaced by the the lava. Um, you know, who lost their homes or houses, and there were, um, you know, a few people who were already houseless, but they were able to take advantage of that hand up and get jobs and get housing and, and, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just outstanding, it, um, you know, example of, of what people can do if we give them appropriate hand up. So um, I look forward to working with um, local contractors uh, and, and the government and um, creating, you know, joint ventures where we can help solve this problem and provide housing for, for those um, who need it, as well as uh, the mental health care that is, you know, desperately needed. Um, let's see. Um, oh, on that topic, I wanted to give a shout out to Vibrant Hawaii. They have a um, they have a first aid, a mental first aid workshop going on. Um, I believe. Oh my gosh, it could be today or tomorrow. It's coming up real soon, but please go to their Instagram account, Vibrant Hawaii, and check that out. It's it's free, and you get a certification, and um, just a really wonderful, needed thing. So if you have the time, please, please invest. Right. Uh, you know, um, as someone who worked in veteran homelessness for almost a decade, I, I appreciate your 
your openness about the subject because I feel that there's there's quite a, a few people out there that that really just don't look at the the equity gap issue for people who are displaced and without homes. You know, a lot of people just look at it from, oh, why the bugger not be able to work or, or what are they not doing right when they don't realize that how much it takes to get out of that scenario. You know, a a really jarring statistic that I learned early on in working in homelessness and this this number has changed a little bit. But I mean, it's it was one of the things that really opened my eyes was that, you know, for every one day that you you spend in inequity and despair, it takes 20 days to get out of it. And so a lot of people don't think about how hard people are working to get out of that rut that they're in. So having the open mind to be able to approach those people from outside of the standpoint, of, oh, it's probably drugs. Oh, they're lazy. Are they? That's really appreciated. Yeah, thank you. And, and that is that's a true statistic that you're talking about there. You know, for every day, you know, <laughs> it takes you, you know, that many more to to, <laughs> to get out. It's just a downward spiral. And, um, you know, it breaks my heart when I hear about, um, you know, people being on, um, you know, the SNAPS program and still not having enough nutrition for their children. They're forced to choose between, you know, are my kids going to go hungry or will they eat the proper amount of nutrition? And if you're focused on nutrition, that's great, but then your kids are going to be hungry. You know, they're still not getting the caloric intake they need. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's so much easier you know, I mean, nobody's going to listen. I mean, it's torture to listen to your child say that they're hungry, you know. Um, I And I, you know, my mother was well-educated. Um, uh, my um, adopted mother uh, was well-educated. And um, at one time, uh, you know, after her divorce, she had uh, trouble managing her money. And there, there were days that we went shopping at the Shell gas station, um, you know, <laughs> certain time periods where we do that for months because it was the only credit card that she had that she had um, money on. So, um, you know, it's whatever the Shell gas station had, that's what we would eat. And <laughs> I would, uh, I would, I would steal hamburgers from the lunch line sometimes, admittedly. And uh, it's, it's a terrible place to be, to be hungry. And I, I, I don't wish that on anybody, you know. Well, we've got just a little bit more time left. Is there anything else you'd like to elaborate deeply on before I ask you a few more questions? Um, hmm. you know, I, I mean, I, I'd love to take this opportunity again to say to please, you know, go to uh, votingformaurice.com or voteformaurice.com. You can spell it out, F-O-R or the number four, either way, you'll, you'll get there. Um, I would definitely love donations. I am a uh, working class and I'm not um, after large contributions in my ideal um, I need about $20,000 total for this campaign, and uh, I would love to have a thousand twenty dollars donations. You know, um, I don't represent any special interest. Um, I am. I think that nepotism is just abhorrent, and um, we have to root it out. Um, <laughs> there's so many things that we can do here um, to to make things better, and I know, um, you know being in the trades, having been in the trades, I should say, um, and having dealt with the, the a permit process here, we need to do a lot to facilitate permits for people who already have homes here who are just trying to get, you know, their basic needs met. I've um, talked with plumbers here who uh, can't get permits right away for um, plumbing emergencies. And so they're having to do you know, do the plumbing a certain way, an emergency way, and then come back and then do it the permitted way. Mm. So, you know, that that's more cost on the homeowner because we don't have a system that is, um, you know, handling those emergencies mm -hmm. appropriately. And, you know, for me, this is just a, a prime example of a complex process. Okay, so I was a quality engineer working at, at uh, Ford uh, Chicago uh, Assembly Plant, which is the oldest assembly plant um, in the United States. And uh, it was as big as an entire city. Um, I would average 11 miles a day walking the line, going up and down and tracking down problems. Sometimes it was material defects. Sometimes it was um, just, um, you know, an error um, by the, the auto workers. So I, I would find ways to make things easier for them 
you know, shorten their distances with how far they walk to their supplies, getting them the right tools, right education, et cetera. And, you know, that's really all this is. It's working with people and going through the system, a very complex system, and finding out what areas need more work. And, you know, it's it's not so much about discipline and and you know, being punitive <laughs> in our actions, but about education. Um, I think that there are a lot of people who are working in the um, permit department that would love uh, an advanced education, would love to um, go to school and learn code, become an engineer or an architect. And we, we simply don't have enough of those people working for us. So um, instead of canning everybody, we should have an opportunity where we raise people who are already there. Mm -hmm. Dig it. Well, with uh, the time we've got left, one question that I'm asking every candidate is, this is not just about the election itself, but just Hawaii in general, the hui around us. What can we as voters, constituents, and people of Hawaii do to help right now? Well, um, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> there are quite a few things you can do. One, um, if you have the means, and not everyone can, but if you have the means, I would stock up on food and water. And um, I'm only talking about two weeks supply. That's what's recommended. And that can make the difference between being somebody who can help when crisis hits and being somebody who needs help. Um, so uh, it's not just a matter of protecting yourself, but it's a, about positioning yourself so you can you can help others um obviously being active in the democratic process you know looking listening to the show getting other friends to listen to the show listen to you know the other formats and the debates that are happening getting people involved in um you know making sure that everyone you know who's capable of uh voting is registered to vote making sure that your your voter registration is current that you have the the right address you know when i was uh, getting my signatures to uh, be able to get on the the ballot um there are quite a few people that i know who are well educated who didn't know that they were still registered at some address from five or ten years ago so um, it's just one of those things that's easy to forget. And if you go to my, my website, votingformaurice.com, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's a shameless plug, I know, but on the front page of my, my website, because it's, it's most important beyond me, beyond you know, my platform, what's most important is that you learn how to vote, you learn where to vote, and you know what district you're in. And on my front page, under my picture, you'll see all that information, how to vote, when to vote. And uh, there's um, a little link for which district am I in. And, um, you know, it's been redistrict. So, you know, you might have old information. This is the most current information. There's a, a map there under which district I'm in. And you can see exactly um, if you're in district two or not. Um, I will put up other links so you can see the other maps, but um, if you do a Google search, you should be able to find them also. Right on. We'll make sure to put all the links you mentioned for you and your campaign in our show notes. Well, before you go, Wonderful. I'd I, like to I, ask yeah, you. I, I wanted, I'm sorry. I just yeah. want to add one more thing to that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> they, as, as having been an employer here, um, you know, one thing that I would like to encourage other employers or employees is to discuss what your pay is talk to each other about what you're getting yes. paid. We should know what each other are getting paid. Mm -hmm. and there, there should be no issue with it. And that way everyone's held accountable. If, if you're getting per, paid more than I am, you know, I want to know why. And well, maybe you're more skilled and you're better at this and that. And then I know, well, if I do those things better, if I work on those things, will I get paid more? You know, so it gives me, you know, goals. And also it makes sure that every, everything is on the up and up. You know, if we're all discussing what we're getting paid, we can pretty quickly determine that, you know, whether or not there's pay equity in the workplace yes. and, um, you know, eliminate it. And I think that there's a lot of employers who don't even understand that they're engaging in those practices. This is so um, it's systemic, you know, uh, sexism. There's uh, so many things in our speech, in our vocabulary. Some of the strongest women I've met on island who talk about women power I have seen say some of the most sexist things <laughs> and not, not horrific, just, you know, in, in promoting men and how good men are, 
you know, and in front of women who are doing a better job, you know. Um, so, you know, it starts with us each. We have to recognize that we're all um, fallible and we just need to do our best to move forward. Dig it. Well, you gave me a lot to unpack from this talk story. So I definitely would love to have you back for a little longer session. We can go into detail if you like. Yeah, I, w- I would love that. That would be great. Right. Whenever, uh, whenever you're ready. I, I think you're, you're trying to do it in 30 days, but you've <laughs> you've been doing a lot, my friend. And I, <laughs> that's that's wonderful, really. My hat off hat off to you because, uh, yeah, you <laughs> you've been a whirlwind going through doing all these. Um, I, I've listened to your podcast, but doing all these interviews. So thank you, Kavika. Well. Thank you guys for all coming out. You know, it's, it's, I think that that's the biggest part that the people just wanted to see. You know, my coming from a family of huge civic engagement, a uh, grandfather who fought City Hall every day, you know, a family that served in the military, uh, a mother who works in law enforcement. You know, I've always been blessed enough to see how the machine works. And even though I didn't want to be a part of it, I mean, I was a document clerk for a while, but that was not my style, bro. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that there's just a, a boogeyman that people have created, you know, that there's a them. And, and it's really not a them or a they. It's an us and it's a we and it's our problem. And we need to come together and talk about it and fix them. Agreed. Well said. Well said. Well, mahalo for coming on today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I can't wait to talk to you again, sir. Yes, mahalo Kavika. You as well. Take care, my friend. Aloha. Aloha. <gasps> Rabbit Holes is a Manava Cow production. This episode was produced by Kavika Hoke and Sarah Rodriguez. Make sure to subscribe and follow on your favorite podcast platforms to add our weekly episodes to your queue.